hello i thought i would do um a video about collars the types of collars harnesses and leashes and muzzles that we have um just to give you an idea of what's out there what they're used for um and what type is what um so first we are going to go with collars um there is a handful of type of collars that is that are commonly used um the the most common is a flat or buckle collar um this is a flat or buckle collar it is this one's a homemade one um but they often they have a d-ring often for um connecting a leash to and if you have tags on your dog and then these have a plastic buckle some of the um older collars or you can buy newer ones but it's a lot harder to find them actually buckle through like a belt um i personally like these ones better but it's up to you and your preference and how strong your dog is the the stronger your dog is um the more you have to be careful about these plastic clips because these plastic clips will break um whereas a a buckle like this one um i'm looking to see if i have another buckle I think it's the only one i have out here with a buckle in it so um this is your your typical collar this one's of course a two inch they come in all different sizes um color shapes this one's leather um the rolled leather um, so that's your typical buckle car collar. The next type is, I, I have them under collars. It's a head or a halter collar or a head collar. This is like a, a mix between a harness and a collar. It is, um, the halt, this one's a halty. Um, I actually don't use these much on my dogs. Or my clients dogs at all um, just because um, I've never had much success with them but there are people who use them with a lot of success um, this one is for a very small dog um, what they do is they put their nose through here this goes around the back of the head this connects to their collar um, that way whenever you go to pull on the collar uh, or do a quick tug um, it actually pulls their nose down, and that's how you correct them. So, um, the next color after that is a limited slip. These are limited slip collars have a piece on them that allows the collar to get tight to a certain point, and then it can't get any smaller. This collar, this collar is commonly called a martingale, though the term martingale is actually a name brand. Um, so it's not, so technically the, the, the correct term is a limited slip collar. But they come in different, um, different sizes, different shapes. Um, this one is a flat one and it has a nylon limited slip area. So this lets it get tight. This one is one of my favorites. Um, it's your basic nylon collar, but it has the chain part on this. And when you're doing corrections, especially for learning how to walk a dog, it's the sound that this chain makes. It's not the getting tight. It's the sound that the chain makes that actually works really well. Um, the next type of collar is a chain collar. Um, chain, or they call slip collars. Um, this is for walking a dog. That's what these are for. These are not, um, these are not for keeping on your dog at all times. What they do is it allows the tightening when it's, um, when it's, there's pressure put on it. It does not allow the dog to back out of the collar. This type of collar, if it's not used correctly, can actually cause damage to the dog. So, although these are very good, I recommend these for um, dogs that are, have trouble walking. These are colors that you do have to know what you're doing. 
Um, the next type of collar, I actually do not have one, is a chain or a prong collar, which is the same chain collar except they have prongs that come out. And the prongs sit between the hair and the dog's skin. And when it's used correctly, it does not hurt the dog whatsoever. But again, it's the same thing. The dog cannot back out of it. And it also, um, it also can, should not be worn all the time. Um, and it can cause damage if it's used incorrectly. Um, correctly, all these collars are great. Um, one of them that I do not have on my list, but I um, am going to mention, and I have a really old one here that does not work anymore, is a an e-collar or an electronic collar. These should not be used without having a trainer involved. Um, it is very easily to hurt your dog to the point where your dog either will need medical attention or um, or the reverse effect happens where the dog becomes fearful. Um, there's a lot more I can say about these. I'm just going to mention them because they're out there. There are other collars that are similar to this that just vibrate. Um, there's other ones that just do a tone. Um, and then there's collars that look like this that are GPS collars. So just because you see a collar like this does not mean that it is an electronic or a shock collar. Um, it can be any one of the other types of electronic collars. They have their purpose as well, especially for deaf dogs um, or um, deaf dogs or sometimes even just dogs that are very, very stubborn. But again, they should only be used under the direction of a certified trainer. Um, to be used correctly. Most people do not use these correctly. So that pretty much goes through all the collars. So next up we will have harnesses. This next segment is on harnesses. And there are as many different types of harnesses as you, as you can imagine out there. Um, I list them generally into three categories, your regular harness, your no pull harness, and then your pulling harness. Um, your regular harnesses look very different. There's very different, um, a very different group of, or a variety of them. So most people are familiar with your normal harness. The head goes over here. Um, the body goes through here. Um, these are your normal harnesses that you can buy at any store, Walmart, um, any pet store, anything. They are decent harnesses um, when they are fit correctly. Um, this one is very well worn. This one was worn daily for quite a few years. Um, depending on what your dog's doing, depends whether you want a harness or a collar or both or um, yeah, what activity. So these are, are two of your very common harnesses. Um, some other harnesses that we have that are listed under just a regular harness is, I've never even used this one. Um, it's a harness like this where this is your chest plate. The dog's head goes through here. Um, this again is, it's up to what you and your dog's comfortable with and what fits your dog. Um, so that's one, this one, it's a mesh so to stay nice and cool. Um, I have a puppy harness here, which is just Velcro. A lot of times puppy harnesses are also used for ferrets and rabbits um, and sometimes even cats. Um, but again, it's just a little puppy harness. And I have a couple of the newer ones. And this one's not buckled. Um, a lot of different companies, this is a rough wear one, a lot of different companies are going to this front type of harness. Um, where the head's here, the shoulder or the shoulders are actually in between here and um, the dog's body is that way. Um, this is a very good walking harness. It, if fitted correctly, harnesses do not restrict movement, um, regular harnesses. Um, here's another one I know I recommend. Let me buckle it here so it's not as um, confusing. Um, this is a, a, another hiking harness um, where the dog goes head through here. Um, it has the front strap that goes behind the shoulder blades and then it has this third strap and this third strap goes behind the rib cage. For dogs who back out of harnesses, this is a very good harness. And again, there's lots of different brands of these. Um, 
but it's that third this third strap that's really really good for what I call Houdini dogs dogs that will back out nothing is ever impossible so keep that in mind nothing is ever impossible a, another type of harness that we have um, I call is a no pull harness and these <laughs> do um, they they create a no pull um, so what they do is they create tension on the shoulders of your dogs or of your dog to direct the tension to the shoulder which prevents the dog from pulling um, sorry okay they prevent the dog from pulling. Um, this one's a sensation collar or sensation harness. And it actually goes like this. The head goes through here. This goes across the shoulders and this goes across the back. Or this goes behind, I'm sorry, behind the shoulders. Um, this goes across the chest and this goes over the, the back of the shoulders. If you were walking your dog and your dog knows how to walk, these are not that bad. Um, even some of our harnesses, like this one, has a front loop on it. Um, the front loop is really good if your dog lags behind a lot um, so that you're not pulling the harness up over their head. But, and the same goes for one of these, that you could use a pulling harness or non-pull harness for that as well. Um, but what happens is if the dog is a strong puller and does not know how to walk yet on a leash, this is not going to help. This, all it will actually do is promote shoulder injury because it's going to prohibit the dog um, from full range of motion. But once your dog knows how to walk, if he just needs a gentle reminder every once in a while, this is actually a really good collar or really good harness for that. Um, but it's not for a dog that pulls. It is not for a dog that does not know how to walk on a leash. And the last type of harness I have is a pulling harness. Um, mine are well used. And this one, it even when you're, you know how they go, sometimes they look a little um, intimidating. Um... This one is padded for the front shoulders. There we go. This one is padded for the front shoulders. Um, and these are to fit my dog. So my dog's, he's actually laying right here behind me. He's a little bit bigger. Um, so it pulls back. This piece goes back around the um, rib cage, back behind the shoulders. And then um, this piece back here, it comes down the back. It comes the whole way down the back. And a lot of times they're called X collars or, or diamond collars because they provide this diamond shape on the dog's back. And it, it puts the pressure of the pulling on the correct points on a dog so that they can actually pull weight. Um, you do not want to pull weight with a regular harness because that is not what they are for. Regular harnesses are actually are for walking a dog. Um, and where pulling harnesses are for pulling weight. Um, we go and and our dog, he's um, actually elderly now, you would never know, um, but he pulls the kids in a sled in the wintertime. He loves it. He also pulls them in a wagon in the, in the summertime. We're talking both kids weigh maybe 50 pounds together. So he, we're not pulling weight, a lot of weight with it, but for him, it's really good. He loves doing it. Um, so you tether them to the right spot and they can pull. Um, we actually even have our one dog pulling the wagon around the yard sometimes to help us with yard work. Um, it's great exercise. But again, um, harnesses are not meant to be worn all the time. Harnesses are not meant to ever be worn 100% of the time. They are meant to be put on for the activity and then taken off. Um, if you're tying your dog up out in the yard and you, you put them on a harness, that's the activity. So when they come back in, you need to take the harness off. Um, this is because no matter how well fitted a harness is, after a certain length of time, they will start rubbing regardless. 
I mean, just think about putting something on your own body. After a while, it will rub a little bit. Um, so harnesses are taken off um, periodically, even if you're wearing a harness on your dog most of the time. Um, our dogs, the longest I think we've gone in a harness was about two days, and that's backpacking. Um, and even when backpacking, I do try to take them off and when we get to our camp at night, um, just to let them run around without a harness on. It also, some of these harnesses will get hot underneath. They will um, cause um, a little bit of chafing some places. Um, they get itchy. So just be mindful of that when you wear a harness on your dog. Um, so, you know, even if you wear them, if they're wearing them for long periods of time, that's okay. But just make sure that they are not worn all the time. Um no matter what type of harness is used, a dog can very easily escape an ill-fitted harness. Um, I can give you an example. I have a healer mix and this is her harness. She actually, she's looking at me, she can, she actually backs out of this all the time. Um, she knows she's not allowed to and she knows what it's for, but if she gets stuck, she actually backs out of it and it's fitted fairly um, snug on her. It's just she has figured out how to do it. Um, that doesn't bother me because she doesn't just randomly get out of her harness. Um, it would take her actually to be stuck in order to get out. Um, so that pretty much goes over all the harnesses. So now I'm going to go through the types of leashes that we have. And there again are a lot of different types of leashes out there. Um, your most common leash, grab it here, is your buckle leash. And again, all my stuff is old and well used. Um, is your buckle leash. Um, it just has a clip on this end, nylon webbing, nothing fancy about it. Um, these come in a lot of different sizes. Most common is a five to six foot size. When you're training your dog, um, a five to six foot leash is what is recommended. Most public places ha that have leash laws have it for a six foot leash. Um, so that's your normal. This one's a short one. Um, this one's only about four feet. Um, I think this one, this one is a five foot leash, but this one is a lot skinnier of, of um, leash. <laughs> um, the, the width of the leashes for these normal leashes um, tells you how much strength that they can have. If you have a little leash like this or smaller, you're only going to be able to hold back a little tiny bit of weight because the clasp size is also um, relevant to that, to buy a pre-made leash. Um, so this is actually a puppy leash. Um, this is for one of our dogs when he was a puppy. Um, this leash is very old, but it still would work. Um, this is just your normal leash. This is your average dog, your average pool. Um, this is not a hefty puller leash. Um, we also have, they have some newer ones. Again, these are old. Um, this one, um, this one is made from a rope with, that is slightly stretchy. Um, some of the stretch has now worn out of it, of course, um, but it's meant to give just a little bit. So when the dog pulls, it doesn't actually injure you. Um, but again, it's weight. This is max, uh, pull of 1100 kilograms. So it's not a, a super high duty, heavy, du um, heavy puller. Um, I just have a poop bag holder on there. Um, our other leashes. Hi, I want one. Hi. Yeah, I thought you was a ducky. Yeah. So our other leashes that we have is, I. These are good for learning for puppies who chew on their leashes, and this one's a homemade one. Um, I took a, an old leash, cut the handle off, and you can buy the hardware at at any um, actually any home improvement type store that sells it. Um, and just get a small length of chain. Um, and this, this helps keep your dogs from chewing through. So this one's homemade. Um, 
for actually the dog that was behind me when he was young. He chewed through quite a few leashes. Um, this one is a pre-made one, um, which they're getting harder to find. Um, this one, the leather is dry rotting on the, I have to replace the handle, but as you can see it's, it's meant for actually a lot, um, less strength. The other one's a little bit more, um, stronger. So those are your normal leashes. Um, there's still some different variety that, you know, I don't have to show you, but that's your normal leash. Um, the next type of leash is a retractable leash. Um, oh, this is a, so this, um, so your normal retractable leash, they come in a lot of different types as well. A lot of them come with a flat buckle to this point, and then it's a single cord the whole way through. Um, this one is a flat one. Um, I prefer this one over the cord one, um, but I don't really recommend retractable leashes unless, unless your dog really does not pull. <laughs> um, because what happens is the dog will get excited, will get away from you. Um, this is a 16 foot leash. You're, aren't, you're not able to control your dog as well. Um, I do not recommend these for training or new dogs whatsoever. Um, if your dog gets excited and starts walking around you, they can walk around something like this and when they go to pull they can pull with enough force to actually cut through your skin um, and they will cut through the skin all the way down to the bone so that is a thing with retractable leashes um, that is why that i do not recommend them at all when you're starting to train a dog if you want to use one after your dog is trained that's completely up to you um, this is my emergency leash that i keep in the vehicle um, it works it works wonders for that if we find a, a random dog um we have to go out and help somebody capture a dog we have a leash um and i have a leash that i could use um so that's a retractable leash um they are not rated for any pool i should say that um so there are certain dog breeds that you will not be using one with because they just won't last um now, long, my next on my list is long leads, and then after that is tie outs. A long lead, you can buy one. They're, they're just flat webbing. They're 20, 30 feet long. Um, or you can make one. Um, I just take rope. I do uh, a knot on the end by a clasp, and I have a long lead, and I can go anywhere, any length that I want. I normally, um, I actually normally go 30 to 50 feet. Whenever I do one, this is a 50 foot length of rope. Um, and then at the other end, I tie a handle. Um, so this is, this is one that I use for training for recall. Um, and I do that long rope, um, a long rope for recall because, um, it lets the dog run a little bit more. It's easier. It's easier for them to lose attention on you. Um, so to me, I feel that it works a little bit better, but use whatever length that you can find. Um, I know a lot of stores will sell a webbing, um, a webbing long lead that is 30 feet. Some of them are only 20 feet. Um, I actually also go hiking in places with these long leads. Um, uh, I try to only go between 15 and 20 feet. Um, if I'm going out hiking with a long lead and that way I still have control of the dog, but the dog can walk out in front of me, um, or go, go look at things. Um, so there's long leads are that. Um, you can use these as a tie out for a short period of time. We take them camping with us because they're not permanent tie outs. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, a tie out, I don't have a chain anymore. Um, I don't have a cable. It actually broke. Um, tie outs are normally, you don't use rope for tie outs. Tie outs, you normally use either a coated cable or, um, a chain, um, this leash, this is the chain that, this is a tie out chain, um, that I made the leash with. Um, tie outs are normally heavy. They're normally rated for a lot more weight. They're very, they're better made. Um, and they're not meant when you buy them in long lengths. Um, this one is a six foot length. Um, but when you buy them in long lengths to tie out your dog with, they are not meant for walking. Um, 
they're not meant for correcting your dog. They are meant to tie your dog out in order to keep your dog contained for a longer length of time. Um, I'm not going to get into any discussion about tying out dogs versus having them in kennels versus you know creating them in the house. That's a whole different story. Um, but there is a there is a time and place for for having your dog on a tie out. Um, and so when you do that, just be conscious that the tie outs they have um, are for keeping your dog out there for an extended period of time. Um, so just kind of remember for leashes and tie outs. Um, that everything is made with a variety of materials and it ranges from nylon webbing to leather to chain, right? And so each one is rated for a different pool capacity. So keep that in mind. The clasps on the ends, um, here's, you know, three different types just right here, are also rated for different weight capacities and different pulling capacities. A dog that pulls might break through this type of clasp very easily. This one is actually for a horse lead. Um, it can take a whole lot more pulling before this one breaks, but I have seen them break before. Um, also be aware of your surroundings and where you're going. I have seen these and this other chain get messed up in sand um, because sand will get in there and it'll mess it up and it'll make a malfunction and then the dog will get off. Um, my dogs actually still get off of this. Um, They'll sit there and they know how to position their body in order to get this to open up on their harnesses to get out. Um, so I don't use those for tie outs at all. Um, a carabiner like this is actually really um, good for dogs that, that get off of the chains, though mine have figured out that if they roll around enough they can get this locking mechanism to slide down um, and open it up. But if you're using a carabiner, just make sure that the weight ratio, the, the weight for the carabiner is correct for what you're doing. Um, you don't want to put one on there that's only, you know, expected to hold 20 pounds because a dog can pull past that and pull them apart or, or break this part of it. Um, if you're going to use a carabiner, I suggest using a locking carabiner only because then you can securely connect it. Um... So, um, also remember to be aware of the size and the weight of everything compared to your dog. Um, this one is extremely light. It's made with an aluminum alloy. Um, but if you get a steel carabiner, it could be very heavy. Um, this, because it's made for a horse lead, is a lot heavier than a clasp like this. So if you have a little tiny dog, you probably don't want to be using a, a um, you don't want to be using a clasp like this on a heavy dog because it will weigh down on the neck if it's for longer than just a very short period of time. Um, there is one leash that I realized that I did not bring out. Um, the leash is a um, limited slip leash and let me see if I can't. I've made them before. Um, they're very easy to make um, but I actually have one just in the car on the other side of the house. Um, they don't have anything on them. They they normally look like this, except they have a little stop um, so that they can only get so tight. And what they are is you just slip them around the, the head of the dog and um, and when you pull the leash it gets a little bit tight, but it doesn't choke the dog because it gets, um, it stops. Um, normally it's a little leather or some type of stop on it that keeps it from getting it tighter. So it only gets to a certain um, tightness. Those leashes are only good for taking your dog in and out of places, um, let's say like to the vet's office, from the car into the office, or um, an emergency. Um, those aren't leashes that you would use for walking your dog. Um, if you walk a lot with your dog off leash, that might be a really good leash to have as an emergency leash. Um, because the only time you're really going to leash your dog up then is if you run into somebody or you run into wildlife or something like that where you have to have your dog leashed. Okay. Next is harnesses. Or, I'm sorry. Next is muzzles. Um, let me grab the muzzles over here. 
Uh, muzzles are really good to use um, when you have a dog that's reactive because they keep, they're for safety for the dog and they're also for safety for you. Um, the, what you really need to, to keep in mind is that muzzles are not for long-term wear, muzzles are for use. So if your dog is reactive, you might wear a muzzle when you go walking, um, but then when you get to the house, you take it off. Um, there are a lot of different types of muzzles. Muzzles do not restrict breathing, they do not restrict panting, and they do not restrict drinking water. Those are your three things. You do not want to restrict any of those three, breathing, panting, or drinking water. So there's many different types of muzzles. Um, for muzzles that you can buy for your dog, um, there is, this is a cloth muzzle. This is just a, a cow one. Um, it goes over the dog's nose, goes into here. This buckles behind their head. It's very simple, um, but it is not for long-term use. This is for, um, let's say, um, you're cutting your dog's nails and your dog nips at you all the time and you want a muzzle for safety while you're getting that done. Very, very short amount of time. Um, so this is not for a long term. Um, the same with this next one um, is a mesh muzzle. It's the same exact concept. Um, the dog's head goes through there. This goes behind them. Um, again, it's not for a long time. If um, but they, these are great for uses for short things. Um, going to the vet, I know a lot of vets use muzzles like this or a cloth muzzle. Um, when I, I was working with wild dogs, um, we actually used them on the wild dogs themselves. This is why I actually have some of these. Because um, we were using them on the wild dogs while we were processing them, even though they were tranquilized. Um, and then I've also used them to groom a dog, um, either cut hair, um, look at a wound, um, porcupine quills are a good one if they're not in the face, <laughs> um, or cutting nails. Just something that the dog would react to me, these are really good for. They're very short term, they're not for long term whatsoever. Um, I also have, this is my favorite, is a basket muzzle, and this is for, it actually fits two of my dogs. Um, this is size, everything is sized for your dog. So if you don't know what size you need, you need to go and get it sized. Um, you need to take a look at your dog breed and then, or the best thing to do is if you can find a place that lets you take your dog in is go and size them. Um, try one on. Um, this muzzle goes over the dog. It allows them to pant. It allows them to breathe. And actually, because this hole is larger, it actually does allow them to drink water. Um, basket muzzle I still do not keep on the dog for a long period of time. Um, the hotter it is, the shorter amount of time that I keep them on there. Um, this one I use regularly uh, because one of my dogs does not like getting his nails cut. Um, he is, I am not the first dog owner, we'll put it that way. I don't know what happened, um, but he bites. He will bite. He's bit through my hand before. Um, so he, this goes on him when we're grooming him, uh, once we finish his face. Um, and that is for safety. That is for his safety. He feels more confident with it on. I can tell through his body language and it's all for my safety so that, or groomer's safety, so that he does not um, bite them. Um, that's pretty much the muzzles. Um, they're only temporary. Muzzles are not meant for longer than a short period of time. Um, so if you're going hiking with your dog, I would look at something that's a little bit bigger like this versus a cloth muzzle. Um, both of them are, this is a mesh, but the cloth muzzle, they're all really good. Um, but they're all for short period of time and to fit one perfectly or perfectly to fit one to your dog, you do need to make sure that the, um, that they can pant, that they can um, breathe and that they can drink from it because you do not want to not have your dog be able to do that. So hopefully those are your basic tools and I know this is a really long video um, but I'm, I'm hoping that I went through a lot of them um, very well. I um, 
would like to open the door for any questions. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, for any questions, you know, message me for them um, or, you know, we'll get back to you and we will try to answer them. Um, I'm not saying that anything is better than another. My brands, I'm not promoting any brands. I know I'm wearing oh, Ar Under Armour today, but um, I'm not, I don't promote any brands. All brands in my eyes are equal. Um, there's personal preference in how they fit your dog and that goes for collars and harnesses um, and muzzles actually. Um, leashes are the same. It's up to personal preference. You get one. Um, I do I do want to say though, before I stop the video, I want to point out the, the correct way to hold a leash because most people do not know this um, and they end up get hurting their wrist. Your thumb is your strongest finger, your strongest joint. And I always tell people, it's actually this hand, I cut this thumb off a couple years ago um, and it was reattached and I have full function of it. Um, everything was very quickly, but I do not have as much strength in this hand because of that. Um, and I have very limited feeling in my thumb because of that. With that being said, I have worked with pit bulls, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, Malamutes, all pulling, um, and my thumb has been able to, to stop them. So when you hold a leash, you actually want to put the leash over your thumb and then loop it and then hold it and what this does is when the dog pulls on it for whatever reason even your best walkers that are already trained if they see a squirrel they see a um an animal of any kind they if they go after it for whatever reason they will pull if you keep this down your thumb will hold them back um it, surprisingly it does not fall off your thumb when you hold your leash like this, it actually can dislocate your hand from your arm at your carpal tunnels, or at your tunnels, carpals, sorry. Um, this is not good leash placement. Good leash placement, again, is thumb, loop, hold. So keep that in mind when you're looking at leashes um, and, and you're deciding what type of leash you want to, hold, want to use for your dog. Make sure that you can do this comfortably. Um, this way, like I said, if the dog pulls, you're not going to um, hurt yourself. So with that being said, and it getting dark outside here, um, I'm going to close the video. I hope this answered a lot of questions. And again, sorry about the length.